Hi everyone, it's Calum from Render, and today I'm going to be showing you how to index your designs across multiple cuts, effectively giving you an infinite work area. So the first thing that you want to do is open up Lightburn and get your project imported. Alright, so this is the artwork that we're going to be using today. The first thing that I actually want to do is, this may be nitpicky, but the offset between the bottom of the L and the lower line and the top of the H in the upper line is actually different, so I'm going to be adjusting the design slightly in order to get rid of that. What we're going to be doing now is actually scaling up the design in order to take advantage of the optics ability to index across multiple cuts. So the next step is going to be taking this large file and then cutting it into two pieces that can be individually cut. And so again, we're going to use Lightburn's cut feature. So I'm going to make my cutting tool. Uh, I'm gonna start, well, it doesn't really matter where I start over here. And then I am going to drag it and I'm going to cut it around there. Now I'm grabbing the design that we brought in, and then I'm shift clicking our cutting tool, I'm going to tools, and then I'm going to cut shapes. I'm going to take this first half and I am going to color it blue because we're going to be cutting it first, and the second half right here, I'm going to be coloring it red because we're going to be cutting it second. Now each one of our halves are staying together. Okay, and while they are together, I am going to add in my targets. And so what you want to do is you'll want to go to Window. You're going to want to turn on the art, art library. The only thing we currently have in here is targets, um, but we're going to be adding uh, more artwork and graphics to this as we find more and more that people routinely use. So I'm just going to drag in two targets. I'm going to close out of this. I'm going to grab my second half and I'm just going to, with my arrow keys, just shift it a few clicks over here. And then I'm going to grab a target and I'm going to snap it to that point. And you can see when your cursor creates that, that tiny symbol, then that means that it's going to be snapping. I'm going to grab another one of these targets and I'm turning on the output for a second. Uh, we don't actually need to cut these targets. They're just, they're just going to be digital, but it just makes them a little bit easier to see when you're working with them. So I'm dragging this target down and I'm going to be snapping it to, to this point down here. And I'm going to do the same thing with these targets right here. I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to bring it up to here. I should mention that you can also just make your targets. You don't need to import them from an art library. And the way that you would make a target is by going into the line tool, snapping a line there, hitting escape, snapping another line from here to here, hit escape again. You're going to grab both pieces and you are going to group them together. And so what you've made is a target that Lightburn can recognize. And this can be any shape, but it does its calculations from the center of it. And so it's helpful to do a little bit of a crosshair symbol so that you have a very obvious center point to the shape. I'm gonna get rid of this because I don't need it. I'm gonna grab this last target and I am going to snap it to the end of this line segment right there. And then we are almost ready to start cutting. So the first tile, you don't need to do anything special with. You can treat it exactly like a normal Lightburn file. All of the print and cut features come when we go to cut our second half or however many you have in your design. So anytime that you're not using the cutting mat with the optic, you'll want to put down a piece of sacrificial material to ensure that you don't damage the surface that is beneath the object that you're cutting. So here I'm just laying down a piece of cardstock you want to grab the optic. 
and then unfold it. And uh, to pop it up off of the cutting mat, you want to uh, grab the front edge of the lower body and push down slightly on the bottom left-hand corner of the cutting mat until you hear it unsnap. And then you're going to pick up the optic. And I'm just going to set it over here. And I'm going to pull the cutting mat out of the way. Well, we've got the optic right here. It's going to take a minute to talk about the bottom of the machine. There are these rubber feet spaced out all over the bottom of the lower body that allow the optic to not slide around on the surface that you are going to be cutting. And so that's what makes it stable on top of the pre-existing surface like this foam core. And I'm just going to line up the lower body and the front end cap with the front bottom edge of this piece of foam core because that at least perfectly aligns my first tile. And then I'm starting perfectly aligned with the material instead of, you know, starting misaligned, which would just make it a little bit more difficult to salvage in any scraps or unused sections of the foam core. So now that the lower body is aligned with that front edge of the foam core, I'm going to unfold the upper gantry and then drop it down onto the lower body. Make sure that the shield and the filter are properly in place. They are. And I'm going to plug in my power. I'm using the included 100 watt USB Type-C power supply. And then I'm using the second included cable to attach the machine to the computer. So now that we're connected, I'm going to hit home. And you can see the optic home with the front edge of the material. Next thing that we're going to do is take a look at our cut settings and our outputs and make sure that all of that is correct. So first thing that I'm going to do is turn off the outputs off of all of the layers that we are not currently going to be working with. To edit these settings, I'm just double clicking on this layer and I'm going to try a single pass at 13. Going over to the advanced section, I'm going to turn on cut through and overcut. When you're cutting thicker materials, it can sometimes be helpful to have a small value in the start pause and a small value in the overcut because it can take a second for the laser to push all the way through the material. These settings, by the way, are available in the render material library right here but I wanted to show you guys where you can change your settings. Now I'm going to go up to the monitor and preview the cut and make sure that it all looks okay. It looks like it's doing about what I expect it to. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay on that. I'm gonna go over to the laser tab as opposed to the library. I'm going to make sure that all of these settings are correct whenever you are performing a cut that uses Lightburn's print and cut feature, you want to make sure that you're in absolute coordinates mode as opposed to current position or user origin. The preview looks okay, so we are going to hit start. So once you have your first half done, go ahead and grab both of these and I'm just going to move them. I'm using the arrow keys on the keyboard to move the second one into position. I'm going to turn off both the output and the visibility of the one that we've already cut. And we're just gonna focus on this one right now. So with this selected, I am going to make fine adjustments using the X position and the Y position boxes up in the top left here in Lightburn, and I am going to 
decrease its X position until it is pretty close, but not too close to the left side of the cutting volume, just to give, her, give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room. And then by increasing or decreasing the distance and increasing or decreasing the speed, we can hone in on our point until the laser head is perfectly pointed right on top of it. So I'm going to pick up the optic now and I'm going to move it. Uh, I'm actually going to put a couple of these one, two, three blocks on this corner right here and this corner right here, just to keep the foam core from shifting when I, when I pick up the machine and move it. I'm actually going to put a third one right here. So I'm going to pick up the optic, looking at where the laser head is. And I'm going to just set it back down. It doesn't need to be perfect because Lightburn is going to take our imprecise move of the machine and reorient the artwork to make it line up. So what we want to do now is we're going to enable the fans and then we are going to fire the laser at 1%. We are going to jog the laser using these arrow buttons right here until the laser perfectly points down onto this target, and then we're going to tell Lightburn that it is actually above that target. All right, and so now that the optic is lined up right above this dot right here, we're actually going to click on this dot, and then we are going to go to Tools, Print and Cut, Set First Target Position. And so that tells Lightburn that it needs to be looking out for a secondary point somewhere. And so now what we need to do is jog the machine up close to this point and then dial in on it in the same way that we did the first time. So I'm just going to roughly click here. And I just noticed that my speed is still set to five. Well. I guess I will just wait for it to uh, make its way north. Well, I guess while it's doing that, I can talk about the targets a little bit more. So if you notice, I decided not to actually engrave these targets because I didn't want it to show up on the finished work piece. But considering how difficult it is to actually see the cuts on, on this particular material, the matte black foam core, I think it probably would have been a better idea to actually lightly engrave these or potentially put a piece of masking tape down and then lightly engrave these targets when I was still in the first position. However, if this was something like plywood or chipboard, we've never had any issues in the past with visibility because those materials are just significantly higher contrast. Now that the optic has made its way northward. We're going to go ahead and switch views again, and then we're going to dial in the laser head until it is right above this dot. Now we're going to go back to the print cut menu and select second target position. Now in the same menu, you want to select align output two targets. I'm going to clean off some of the residue so we can see how well it lines up. And with just our second tile turned on, we're ready to hit start. Thank you. 